Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be looking at what's next after Blender. At some point in life you have to finish what you're learning. You finish high school, then go to college, finish that, then get a job, then get a girl, finish that, hopefully several times, like I do with you. <laughs> you get the point? This is true for Blender too. Learning Blender or using Blender should not be your life goal. There should always be a second step, what you will do after Blender. For example, my next step will be your mom. <laughs> then your sister but obviously this should not be your second step unless but seriously let's look at what you could do after learning blender number one sell add-ons add-ons are becoming big business thanks to the ever expanding community which is always demanding faster and easier ways of making things studios and artists need new tools and features and the blender organization already has too much on its plate fixing old bugs while maintaining blender as a software with all of its different branches. Though it's helpful to know how to code, it's no longer necessary thanks to geometry nodes and add-ons like BuggerPy that can convert geometry node setups into add-ons with just a single click. So all you need is an idea and some good knowledge of geometry nodes and you can start raking in millions from your add-ons. Number two, making video games. If making add-ons is not for you, try making video games. If you can use Blender, you have half of what is required already and the rest you can learn from other artists like Sebastian Leigh. His YouTube channel is filled with a lot of knowledge to get you to the next level of graphics and game design. Some of his tutorials I will recommend everyone to watch regardless of what you want to do next include this video on how to make a packaged derivative game. He shows you how to make a whole planet with mountains, lakes, rivers and an atmosphere explaining everything. It's not a step-by-step -step tutorial but a project overview breaking down different concepts and problem solving which is both entertaining and educating at the same time. He also shows how to make different types of shaders like volumetric shaders, water shaders and a lot of other things that you may need in your game development journey or even your movie making or visual effects journey. Another game developer I would recommend is Thin Matrix. He also makes project breakdown videos and because he makes his games using a game engine he made himself, you can learn a lot more about how games are rendered and what it takes to make your own game engine. Number three, become a VFX artist. Blender is a very powerful tool and in the right hands can do quite a lot. Every month, there are hundreds of indie directors or small studios making short movies, so there is always demand for VFX artists. Though most artists would prefer using a professional tool like Houdini, you can still do a lot of VFX directly in Blender thanks to add-ons like RBD Lab. As a VFX artist, you have to be able to make explosions, smoke simulations, and destructions of all things. The RBD Lab add-on handles VFX very well and is quite easy to use. Number four, build a Blender marketplace. If you want to rake in millions of dollars, don't bother with add-ons, don't bother with the game development, do one thing, make your own marketplace for Blender products. Sites like Blender Markets are blockers connecting artists who want tools to make their lives easier and artists who can make said tools. These sites take a cut each time a buyer buys anything like an add-on, a texture pack or models. If this sounds too easy, it's not. A marketplace is a big business, but it also takes a lot of work. But if you manage to learn Blender, you probably can manage this too. All you have to figure out is payment processing, artist payout, handling traffic, marketing, building a robust platform, and the business side of things like taxes in all major markets you will be operating in, but it's still doable. Right now, Blender Market is a monopoly in this space, so there is room for a new platform, maybe that will be yours. Number five, become an affiliate. If building your own marketplace is too much, try affiliate marketing for add-ons. If you have a large audience or any audience at all, promoting add-ons is a great way to make some extra change at the end of the month. One of the best channels at this is Ask NK. Though this may look easy at first, you have to have a great understanding of what you are promoting as users are not only watching you to hear about new things on the market, they also want to learn how to use them from you. That's why I have much respect to channels like Ask NK and Games From Scratch because they have to find out what's new and learn how to use it before anyone else to make a proper review of it. If you master this, there is an audience waiting to hear your take on each matter going on in the industry. This is why any video as NK releases can rake up thousands of views in just a few hours and all of those are potential referrals. Number six, create a course about Blender. If you are really good at Blender, everyone will want to learn from you. You can make training courses for your followers. You can start small with a YouTube channel to test out the waters like Max Hay who has grown his YouTube subs from zero to over 80k in less than six months. His channel is a testament to how fast you can grow if you have something good to offer to the Blender community. Then you can funnel that audience into paid courses for more in-depth tutorials. 
and there are so many topics to teach. You can teach about car animations like Jin Yan. His course has over 64 videos teaching lighting, animation, car rigging, project management, sound design, and more. Another great YouTuber who has mastered this formula is Gleb Alexandro. His channel has the most royal subscribers. They are always interested in what he puts up on YouTube or in his courses. This royal audience did not come by chance or by luck. It grew from his constant production of high quality content and collaborating with other artists like Eddie Barrows. Their courses are one of the most selling courses on the market, like the cinematic lighting course with over 2,000 students and their photogrammetry course also has more than 2,000 students. It takes you through the best practices for 3D scanning using open source source and commercial software, you gain access to over 80 plus videos. Make movies. Most of us get into Blender to make movies or animations, so what's stopping you? If it's direction or where to go next, follow someone like Ian Hubert. Did you know he directed Tears of Steel, a Blender short film that was released around Blender 2.5 launch? You don't get chances like that without something to show. You start by putting some work out there. If you want one day to direct a Blender movie, this is the formula. It's what Ian Herbert did and it's what Colin Levy did. He directed Sintel, another Blender short movie. He also made Skywatch, which was also done in Blender. I think the quality of this movie was better than most Netflix series I've watched. Obviously, there's so many directions you can take, but the most important one is starting now. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.